Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. And today, today we are talking about armor stats, mobility, resilience, and recovery. If you cast your mind back to a couple of weeks ago, I made an in-depth video on armor mods, give you guys a clear look at what they all do, which ones are the best, and ultimately answering a few burning questions surrounding the topic of mods. If you haven't seen that, I will link it down below. But the reason I bring that up is because one of the main questions that arose as a result of that video was a question surrounding armor stats. Since some of the mods allow you to boost these stats by a few points, the question was whether or not they were worth it, and more importantly, how much difference is there between, say, a resilience stat of 2 and 8, or a mobility stat of 3 and 7, etc. Well, that is what we're going to aim to answer in this video. So if you do enjoy this and you do find it helpful or insightful, then a like would be super appreciated. Be sure to comment down below and let me know what you guys think or if you have any questions. Now, to begin with, starting at the very top, armor in Destiny 2 now carries one of three different stats, mobility, resilience, and recovery. Mobility increases your movement speed and max jump height. However, it's important to understand that this only influences your walking speed, not your sprint speed. And I'll demonstrate this in more detail in just a moment. Resilience is your defense stat. This increases the amount of damage you can take before dying, and we'll take a look at some numbers for that in a moment. And then recovery, this increases the speed at which you regain lost health. In other words, it's basically the time before you can feasibly get back into the fight after taking serious damage. Those are your default armor stats, and every piece of armor in the game, that's helmet, chest, legs, and arms, comes with an intrinsic perk, which carries a point in one of those stats. Examples being the mobile hunter armor, giving you improved mobility, one point per piece, survivalist hunter armor, giving you recovery, or heavy hunter armor, giving you resilience. And of course, the other classes have their own variations of this too, that do the exact same thing. Basically, there are mobility sets, recovery sets, and resilience sets. Of course, on top of this, each piece of armor then has a choice between one of two stats, the interchangeable perk, and the available stats actually depend on both the armor piece and your respective class. For titans, your helmets and legs will always offer you a choice between mobility and recovery, meanwhile your arms and chest will always offer you a choice between resilience and recovery. Warlocks, your helmet and chest pieces will always offer either mobility or recovery, meanwhile your arms and legs will always offer mobility or resilience. And hunters, arms and legs will offer either mobility or recovery, Meanwhile, helmets and chest pieces will offer resilience or recovery. No matter what type of armor you have, i.e. the intrinsic perk, these will always be how your available choices are distributed. In addition to this, thanks to the new mod system, we also have a few extra points we can gather in a few select locations. Three of these are class agnostic, in other words, available to everyone. Meanwhile, the other three are class specific. It's possible to get a mobility mod that can go in your arms, a resilience mod that can go in your helmets, and a recovery mod that can go in your legs. That is an option for everyone. Meanwhile, on the class specific front, for our respective class items, hunters can get a mobility mod for their cloak, titans can get a resilience mod for their marks, and warlocks can get a recovery mod for their bonds. So even though this new system gives you freedom to spec more into the stat you prefer, Ultimately, Hunters will always be the leaders in mobility, Warlocks in recovery, and Titans in resilience. It is however worth noting that on top of the armor perks and mods, each class has some base or hidden points in certain stats. These are points you can't remove or reassign, they're just baked into your specific class. For Hunters, we by default have 4 points in mobility and 1 in resilience. You can see here that I have absolutely 0 gear pieces on with mobility and 0 mods or selected perks, yet my mobility stat still sits at 4. This is the lowest it will ever go, and the same goes for Resilience, sitting at a minimum of 1. So for Hunters, your base stats are 4, 1, 0. For Warlocks, it is 0 in Mobility, 1 in Resilience, and 4 in Recovery. And for Titans, it is 0 in Mobility, 5 in Resilience, and 0 in Recovery. Basically, putting them into the class category that they thematically belong in. Hunters being Quick and Agile, Titans being your Iron Defense, and Warlocks being the Magic type who recover. Something like that. Either way, that is where your points come from. Some are hidden as part of your class, some come from intrinsic armor perks, some from the selectable perks, and the last few from mods. That does of course mean, based on this pre-existing distribution, that some classes will be able to reach naturally higher thresholds in certain stats than others. Basically, Titans being the only class that can hit 10 resilience, Warlocks being the only class that can hit 10 recovery, and Hunters being the only one that can hit 10 mobility. If you want to look at all the possible armor combinations and permutations, I'll link you a Reddit post and a spreadsheet from the Crucible Playbook subreddit down below. It clearly outlines what stat distributions are possible per class and per armor set. However, with all that said, the question still remains, how much difference do these stats actually make? 
Well, let's start with mobility. As mentioned at the start of the video, this influences your jump height and movement speed, not your sprint speed. You can see here two examples side by side, one with a mobility stat of 4, the base for the hunter, and one with a mobility stat of 9, but the sprint speed is identical. Meanwhile, here is that exact same test, now at walking pace, and you'll notice that there is, in fact, a noticeable difference. As discussed, being a hunter, the lowest mobility can go is 4, but even so, there is a clear difference between the two. You might then begin to ask why this would ever be useful, and ultimately, the answer lies in strafing. I mean, when moving around, sprinting is something you'll use by default, so you won't typically walk to a lot of destinations. But when in combat, strafing is where you can benefit from this most. Again, another comparison for you, left with lower mobility, right with higher mobility, there is a noticeable difference in strafe speed. So you could argue that this has greater benefit in PvP than it does PvE. Now with a test like this, it's a little hard to give you exact values for just how much each point in mobility helps, but in truth, I don't feel like that would be especially valuable in this instance anyway. You can see what benefit it provides, but it's also important to think about the bigger picture and how much you're willing to spec into what is essentially walk and strafe speed at the cost of other abilities. So, with that being said, moving on from there to recovery, now this one is a little easier to illustrate. Again, being a hunter, the highest recovery stat I can ever hope to achieve is 6. This is with mods in place. Meanwhile, for Warlocks, that can go all the way up to 10, and there is a noticeable difference in that too. But to give you a clear illustration, I've jumped off this platform on Nessus, and you can see side by side how quickly the health recovery kicks in with higher recovery versus lower recovery. This is every single instance from 0 all the way to 6 on my hunter, so you can really see that at the top level, there is a very big difference, and this would of course allow me to get back into the action so much quicker. I would argue that this is quite possibly the most useful armor stat out there, which also makes it a little annoying that as hunters, we're a little more limited on this front. Sure, resilience lets you take more hits before you're killed, but regardless, there's always going to come a time where you need to take cover, and if higher recovery means I can get back into the fight quicker, this is going to be incredibly important. In PvP, it'll allow you to peek more frequently in between engagements, and in PvE, a great example being, say, the Kalos boss fight in the Leviathan Raid. If you are running to take out counsellors and you take some damage on your way back, faster recovery times mean you'll ultimately be able to turn around and head back out much sooner than you otherwise would. So I would probably go as far as to say get your recovery as high as possible. And then finally, Resilience. This one is a little harder to illustrate in game, so for this I want to give a huge shout out to the Massive Breakdown podcast who put together a spreadsheet with the closest, most accurate numbers we can glean from different tiers of resilience. I've linked their spreadsheet and Twitter down below, be sure to hit them up with a follow and check out what they're up to, but in short, this is what we have to work with. A resilience stat of 0 gives you 186 base defense, then with every additional armor stat point that increases, so we go to 188, 190, 192, 194, 196, 197, 198, 199, 200 and 201, that is of course at 10. So you can see that after a point we do get some diminishing returns, and while yes, quite obviously if you have 10 resilience you will be the most tanky you can possibly be, but at the same time you're also going to have to sacrifice a fair bit for that too. In PvE it's a little harder to extract accurate figures from this, but looking at some weapon data in the Crucible, that a resilience stat of 4 would allow you to take one extra Mida shot, for example, before being killed, which is kind of relevant given that it's one of the most popular weapons right now. Different weapons do of course deal different amounts of damage, and you have to factor in a lot of other things too. So it is quite difficult to say this is how much resilience you should aim for at all times, because obviously the more you have, the tankier you'll be. But you also need to balance out your other stats too. I mean, I would much rather take high recovery over high resilience, of course, but if you can strike a balance, then we're talking. So what I would say is that there is a tangible difference between 3 and 4 resilience, so if you try to at least hit 4 as a minimum, then you'll be in a good position. Using the data that we gathered earlier, as a hunter, if you went down the survivalist route, then you'd be able to hit 4 mobility, 4 resilience, and 6 recovery, giving you the highest possible recovery stat you can get as a hunter, with a good balance in the other two. Warlocks, this is much easier since you have so much base resilience, but dipping into the heavy warlock armor route, you could get around 4 or 5 resilience and come out with 6 recovery. And titans, you could use the restorative path to get something like 4 resilience and 6 or 7 recovery, depending on how you value your mobility. There are plenty of combinations, and again, I encourage you to check out the spreadsheet for some ideas, but the take home from this video is that mobility out of all the stats is probably, in my opinion, the least useful. It does still have its uses, to be clear, I'm not saying mobility is a wasted stat, and if you are a PvP player, then strafing and strafing quickly is of course going to be of great benefit to you, but at the end of the day, it's always going to be a balancing act. Recovery is useful everywhere, both PvE and PvP, so this is a stat you should never 
ever neglect. And resilience, well, as long as you hit four, then from that point onwards, you're really kind of free to do what you want. I will, however, say that there is no right or wrong way to do this. I mean, if you want to be that tanky player who goes in with 10 resilience, be my guest. If you want to strafe as fast as possible and get that slight jump height boost as a hunter, go wild. Or if you want your recovery so damn high that your downtime is as low as it can be, there's also nothing wrong with that. But for those of you that perhaps wanted a little guidance, then these are just some suggestions. So, hopefully that's been helpful. By all means, comment down below if you have any questions. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.